What's up my YouTube friends? Today I want to show you how to use masks in OBS. I feel like this is a super low used feature that has so much potential. I'm going to show you how to create shapes for your cameras and media files. Then I'm going to show you how to use these shapes to create awesome animated camera overlays and full live stream overlays that are completely animated. Really cool stuff. The best part is everything I'm going to show you today is totally free. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 91% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. And if you like my content and it helps you out, please do me a favor and help me out by subscribing to the channel. And click that bell so you don't miss any new content. To create these masks, we're going to use a free image manipulation tool called Pixlr. And don't worry, it is really easy to do. There's a link in the description so you can go to Pixlr, create your own masks, and follow along. I mean, that's the easiest way to learn, so let's jump in to Pixlr. The first thing I want to do is create a simple mask to show you how this works. Let's start with a circle. Here we are in Pixlr and I'm going to go to create new. You can see I'm using Pixlr E here and my live stream is in full HD so that's good. I'm just going to put a name up here. I'm going to call this mask one. I want the background turned off and then I can create right here. So here we are. If I hit that mouse button scroll, I can zoom out a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape here. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to select the circle shape and I'm going to change the fill to black. And then all I need to do is draw that circle onto my canvas. Now you're going to want to try to make this circle as large as you can because you can resize everything in OBS, but you want to get as much of your screen in as you can. I kind of didn't do it right here and had to go back and redo it, but now I'm going to go up to file and save. And I want to save this as a PNG because we want that background to be transparent and I'm going to click download. And this is going to download it to wherever your machine downloads files. And this is usually set in your browser. So just keep that in mind. Here you can see I've switched over into OBS and now we're going to add our mask. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to add my camera. That's what I'm going to use the mask on and I'm going to go in and select my device and it's going to be my cam link and set the custom and then resolution. I'm going to go down and choose my custom audio device. I want this to be my microphone that's on the camera and once I have that set up I'm going to click OK. Check my microphone. Everything's working good. Now I'm going to right click on that and go into filters. I'm going to click the plus under filters and I'm going to select the image mask blend. You can name this if you want. Then I'm going to browse to the path where we created that mask, that circle mask, and it's mask one. And then I'm going to drop down type and I'm going to select alpha channel. And there we go. You can see our circle is created and it just has our camera in that little circle. How awesome is that? Now we can resize this and put it anywhere we want on the screen. So this is a neat, easy way, if you don't have a green screen or something like that, to create an isolated kind of interesting look to your actual camera. So I can put a video up in the background or it could be a game or anything, any media source in the background, and I can move this around. Now just so you know, you can use this mask not just on your camera, but on any media source. I'm guessing at this point you can see how powerful this can be already. But you know me, I want to take it to the next level. I'm going to show you how to create a camera overlay with animations as well. So here we are back in Pixlr E. I'm just going to change the name to Mask 2 and click Create. And I'm going to select Shape and we're going to try a box this time. And I'm going to make sure that the fill is black again. And I'm just going to draw the box in here. And then I'm going to click this arrow up in the top to arrange it. I'm going to move it to where I want in my image. Now I don't want just a standard box shape, so I'm going to draw something on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select this lasso select tool, and then I'm going to choose the polygon lasso select right here, and I'm going to draw a little shape on here like this. I mean, you just click at the corners and it's going to create that shape. Perfect. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to select my arrow tool again and I'm going to rasterize this. Then I can go up to edit and I can clear and it's going to clear that little section for me. So now I'm going to go back to the lasso tool. I'm going to select polygon again. I'm going to create the same kind of edge over here on the right hand side. And since it's already rasterized, we don't need to rasterize it again. All we have to do is go up to edit and clear. And there we go. Now we have kind of a polygon shape for our mask and I'm just going to click the arrange and I'm going to reshape this a little bit. I can move these around to make this a little different of a shape. I'm going to square it up in the center 
and there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this out. So file and then save. Make sure you have PNG selected. We do want the transparency and I'm gonna download this. So that's gonna download to a location on our hard drive that is already set up in our browser. Now I wanna create some lines here and I'm gonna create lines that are black and there we go. And I just wanna adjust the size of these lines. So I'm gonna come up here and adjust this and just get the right thickness to the line that I wanna use. And then I'm gonna delete this one because it's not actually straight. So I just go over here and I right click on that layer and I send it to the dust bin right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another line and you can draw straight lines by holding down the shift key and dragging it and then dropping it and there we go. Now we have a straight line. Now I'm gonna click the arrange button and I'm gonna just kind of align this to the very top of our shape and I can resize it up using these little dots on the corners. And I just want to move this in so it's totally flush with the top of our box. And there we go. So now I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna right click on that shape and I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna drag this down to the bottom. And once again, I'm gonna try to line this up and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it again. And we're gonna drag this next one up here. Man, we'll kind of place it in here and I'm gonna duplicate it again. And this time I can just use the arrow keys to move it. So I'm gonna move it up into place using the up arrow. You can adjust anything in Pixlr just by using the arrow keys for fine adjustments. I'm gonna duplicate it again. Now I'm gonna move this one up with the arrow keys. And there we go. And once again, I'm going to duplicate this one and move it with the arrow keys. And now I think I have enough lines in here. Now it's just a matter of squaring this up to make it look the way I want it to look to give me the effect that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna move this over. And at this point, I'm just going to kind of rearrange all the lines to make sure that I have the look that I want. And some of these may need to be resized a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select the main box and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, I think. I like the idea that the edges on both sides are gonna poke out. So I'm gonna make it like that. And then I'm just going to readjust the sizes again, try to line everything up. Then I'm going to save this out and we're gonna call this one Mask Fringe and click download. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and make all of the fringe unvisible by clicking these little check marks next to those layers. I'm gonna save this again, and we're gonna call this one mask unfringe or no fringe, that's better. And we're gonna click download. And you'll see why I'm doing two downloads for this in a moment. So now we're going to load up this fringe and just click filters since we already have this circle mask on here. And I'm gonna click browse under that mask. And we're gonna select no fringe. And you can see that gives us that cool shape that we had without any fringe on it. Pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna just hide this background layer here so it makes it easier to see. And I'm gonna make this a little larger. And then I'm gonna right click and go to filters again. And let's change this to the fringe one so you can kind of get a look at what that looks like. And that looks pretty cool. So you could just go with it like that if you wanted to. And it looks actually really neat. And we'll turn on our media background right there. For some reason got moved. So we're gonna move it back into the center. And obviously we can move this camera with the mask anywhere we want. But what if we wanted to animate that fringe instead of having it, you know, static? Well, that's why we created two separate ones. Well, let's just shrink it up first. Let's shrink our media background to right there, a little bigger than our actual camera background box. And then I'm gonna go into properties and I'm gonna change the actual video. I think this one will create some cool animation. So I'm gonna just go ahead and open that. And there we go. So that is a cool little background video. Now I'm gonna go into my main camera and I'm gonna change this back to the background with no fringe. So it'll just be that stretched out box. And there we go. All right, so now we have our camera right there. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna right click on our video source, our media source, and I'm gonna go to filters, and I'm gonna click plus here, and we're gonna go back into our image mask. And this one, we're gonna use that fringe image mask on. And we're gonna switch it to the alpha channel so we can see the video, and there we go. So now we have kind of a cool frame or animated video right around our camera. Now that is pretty cool. So I can select both of these at the same time and move them around. Could probably just group them and then move them easily. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add another media source and we'll just add this into our video as well. And then I'm going to move that video source to the bottom. And there you go. Now you can see that we have our cool frame 
with an animated background and you can use any video for this. You can find cool animated style videos to use. You can change the sizes of each of them. This is a really easy way to add some animation to your camera outlines and that sort of stuff. That was pretty epic and you can use any shape you want. The only limit is your own creativity. Let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna create a full live stream animated overlay right now. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new image. We're gonna close that one out. It's gonna be full HD again. We're gonna call this one overlay. Once again, we don't want a background and we're gonna click create and we'll zoom out a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and select our shape tool again. We're gonna go with box. And this time, instead of design, we wanna click on draw and we want to go ahead and uncheck fill. And we just wanna make sure our outline is the proper thickness. You can adjust that with this slider right here. And we're gonna draw the box. Very strange to have the foreground color be the outline, but that's the way Pixlr works. And we're gonna draw this box again. And there we go. So that's the outline for our overlay. I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna click this plus and I'm gonna create an empty layer. Make sure that empty layer is selected. And then I'm gonna go back into my shape tool and I'm gonna draw some lines again. Now, if I hold the shift key, it will create an absolutely straight line. And there we go. And I just wanna click the plus, create another empty layer, and we're gonna add another line. And you can see how difficult it is to actually make these lines exactly the same. What I'm gonna do is click the arrow to try to adjust it and see if I can get it the same. But I think it's easier just to right click on one of these and go ahead and duplicate the layer. And then I can just use the arrow keys to put it wherever I want. You probably get a much more consistent look if you do it that way. And I'm gonna duplicate it again and use the arrow keys to move it where I want. The nice thing about doing it this way is it automatically creates another layer for us. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move these around a little bit. That one still seems to be kind of a different size for some reason. So I'm gonna right click on that one and I'm gonna delete it. And I'm just gonna take this layer and duplicate it again and move it into place. And that's kind of a cool look. That's kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm going to create another layer. This is gonna be an empty layer. I'm gonna go back to my draw tool. I'm gonna to select the rectangle and I wanna make sure there's a fill on this rectangle this time. And I'm gonna turn my outline off. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my colors so we get that black box. And there we go. Now I'm gonna select some of these and I'm just gonna kinda use the arrow keys to move them out a little bit. Give this a little more of an interesting shape. There we go, that's kinda the look I'm going for. I'm gonna go back into my shape tool again and I want draw selected. And I'm gonna select another empty layer and I'm gonna make this with rounded edges so I can adjust the radius on the edge. I'm gonna turn off fill switch it up so that our outline is the one that's selected. I'm going to go ahead and create my outline and we're going to adjust this radius a little higher and now we're gonna draw our box. And there we go. And after drawing this box, I didn't really like it so I wanna go ahead and add a fill to it. And we want the fill to be black as well. So now I'm just going to make sure it creates a fill and we're gonna draw that box again in a more solid color and there we go. And I'm gonna create one more layer and we're gonna draw another box right here. And I'm gonna use the arrange tool to move this around a little bit and resize it and move it around. And there we go. I think that's a pretty reasonably decent start to an overlay. So I'm just gonna go up to file and I'm gonna save. And we wanna make sure we save this as a PNG cause we want the alpha. And we're gonna call this one mask overlay and click download. And once again, this downloads to the location that you have set in your browser. So I'm going to select the fringe one that we already have created. I'm gonna right click and go to filters. I'm gonna select that mask and I'm just going to change this mask to mask overlay and click open. And there we go. Now we have our mask overlay. I can just line it up to the top of the screen and click transform, reset it. And since it's 1920 by 1080, it automatically resets. And you can see now we have a really cool animated overlay. Let's add some text to it. So I'm going to click the text tool to add it. I'm gonna select a font that I wanna use and click okay. And I think I'll just put my name in here. There we go. Now I'm just gonna resize the text and just drag the corners and resize it up. Pretty cool stuff. Now, I don't really like how fast this background is moving. I think that would be really distracting. So I'm gonna go into there, into properties and adjust the speed. I have it set to about 3%. And if you look here, now it's really not moving at all. That's too slow. 
So I'm gonna right click again and go into properties. We're gonna just speed it up a little bit more. There we go. We wanna make sure it has some movement and it's not too distracting. And that's not too bad, that might work. Next, I wanna make use of this bottom box. So I'm gonna add another text layer here and I'm gonna call this one scroll and click OK. We're gonna type some text in here that we want in our scroll and we can make it all uppercase by clicking on there. And we're gonna go ahead and change the font and I'm gonna make this smaller. Cause right now it's mega huge, but you can see when I do that and then when I scale it up, it gets kind of blurry. I don't like that. So the better thing to do is to go ahead and scale it way up and then just make it smaller. So once I do that, now we just have to adjust the size. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold the other end and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and I'm just gonna drag this so it crops out the edge here. There we go. And you can see that green line means that's cropped. Now I'm gonna go into filters on our scroll text. I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna go to scroll. And here I can set the speed that I want my text to scroll at. And there we go. So now we can set up scrolling text down here in the bottom. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. We'll go back into properties, put some more space at the end so it can have a little bit of a differentiation there and make sure that it's properly spelled. That's always nice. And there we go. Now we have some good looking scrolling text. Going along the bottom, we have our name at the top. And what I think I'm gonna do is kind of move this around a little bit. We have to adjust it again on the right hand side. And you do this by holding the Alt key again so you can resize that box. Cause we're really cropping it, we're not resizing the text. And I think I'm going to go into properties on my name text and we can go ahead and change the color here. And I think we'll go with a yellow color. There we go, that looks nice. And we can actually add a background if we want to. And you can turn on your background opacity. We'll turn that down a little bit. And I'm gonna add an outline to our text. And let's select the color for that. We'll make that black. And we'll just adjust up our outline size so we can see it a little better. There we go. And let's move this up to its proper location. Now you can see that little light background that we left on there doesn't look all that great. I don't like that. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna go back into properties. And I'm just going to turn the background color opacity all the way down to zero to remove that background. And there we go. Now this box I have created on the right hand side is where you might put a browser source in um, looking something like, I would probably put like the chat in there or something like that. And now you can see you have a really cool, easy to create animated overlay for your OBS live streams. I'm pretty sure you can see how amazingly powerful the mask tool can be. And with a little bit of creativity, the sky's the limit. Is this the first time you've seen layer masks in OBS? Are you gonna start using them? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see another free way to create live stream overlays, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.